Now that we have brought the data into Alteryx, we can now do a variety of things with the data. We are going to use Alteryx in this video to run a regression. Before we can run a regression, we have to make sure that we have cleaned the data and have it prepared so that numbers are entered in as numbers and characters are entered in as characters. Before we begin, every step that we do is going to repeat the same pattern. The first thing that we will do is we will identify the tool that we want to use and we will drag it onto our canvas. After we have the tool on our canvas, we will then configure the tool. In other words, tell the tool what it is that we would like it to do. And then finally, we're going to run the tool so that we actually execute the step that we've asked Alteryx to perform. Before we can run the regression, we need to make sure that our data is clean and prepared properly. In order to do so, we are going to use the preparation menu that is right next to the in out menu. There, this is a rather large menu with lots of options. You see that there is a scroll bar to the side where we can see additional options because they don't all fit in one, men, in one pane. We're going to use the data cleansing tool. So we will go ahead and click on that and drag it onto our canvas. And as we do, we will see that it makes an automatic connection with the input file. We have, now that we have our tool on the canvas, we need to configure our tool. And when you're thinking about regression analysis and you're thinking about your data sets, there's a number of things that you should consider. Not the least of is whether the default options in Alteryx are what it is that you would like. Alteryx is asking what fields it would like us to clean. These are all the fields that are available in our data set, and that is fine. But the next option is asking us if we would like to replace nulls, meaning missing values, with zeros if they are a numeric field, or blanks if they are a character. This may or may not be appropriate. For this data set, it is not appropriate to replace the nulls. The reason being is that, for example, assume that a company does not have an effective tax rate, but it has a positive net income number. In this case, it is unlikely that the company actually did not have tax expense and therefore has a zero effective tax rate. So if we just let the tool replace that with a zero, what we're saying is that some companies with positive net income may have zero effective tax rates. And that does not make any sense. We would rather not distort the underlying file by replacing these values with nulls. So we will go ahead and uncheck both of these default options, but we will let it remove any leading and trailing white spaces. Now that we have import, we have put our tool on the canvas and we have configured our tool, the next step is to run the tool. And we see that we have now removed any leading and trailing white spaces. Sometimes you have to repeat a tool a second time. In this case, we are going to use that same data cleansing tool, but we're going to configure it slightly differently. We again select it and drag it onto our canvas. Now we are going to remove all of the default options, and this time we want to remove punctuation. Removing punctuation becomes important if a number, for example, like 25,342, is read in as a character set because it has a comma in it to, in the normal formatting range. That punctuation means if we change that type, the data type, from a character or variable string, as Alteryx calls it, into a number, it will only pick up the numbers that come before the punctuation, meaning that in our case of having the 25,000 number, we would only get 25. And there's a slight difference between 25 and 25,000. You do not want to run this data cleansing step with the first data cleansing step that we did because it will not work very well in Alteryx. So go ahead and run that that we just executed. 
Now that we have cleaned our data, the next thing that we want to make sure is that our data is configured appropriately, meaning that information that we want to be read in as numbers is actually characterized as a number, and information that we want to be read in as letters or words is characterized as letters or words. To do this, we are going to stay in the preparation menu and we are going to go over to the right and find the tool that looks like a check mark called select. We're going to select the select tool and we're going to drag and drop that onto our canvas, again seeing that automatic connection. Now that we have the tool on our menu, we are going to want to go ahead and configure the tool. First and foremost, we can get rid of the unknown. This simply adds an additional column of data into our spreadsheet. Then, if we scroll over in the configuration panel, we can see that we have the option to change the type of data, to rename the data in case we did not like the name that it currently had, and provide a description of data. In this case, the type of data is correct for almost every one of the fields that was read in. The only one that needs to be changed is the two-digit SIC code, which was read in as a character. Alteryx denotes this through variable string, since characters can be of any length. And we need to change that to a number, which is denoted by double in Alteryx. To do so, we click on the down arrow, and we see the menu of all of the types of data that could we could classify something as. And we're going to scroll until we find double and click once on double. Now that we've configured our tool, we can go ahead and run that. And we see that Alteryx also provides us with an indication of what it is that we have changed by highlighting that type in a light red. Now that we have our data correctly typed and we have it cleaned, the next thing is to actually run the regression. We will find the regression menu under the predictive it is labeled with an R, menu options. Here we see all of the different types of multivariate analyses that we could conduct. In this case, we're going to use the linear regression tool. So we will go ahead and select that and drag it onto our canvas. Now that we have it on our canvas, we need to configure our tool. We'll do for, so first by typing in our model name it is important to note that in this case, the model name may not have any spaces. So if you would like a space, then you can use an underscore to delineate differences in words. I named the model ETR regression. Now we need to select the target variable. This may also be called the dependent variable or the left-hand side variable for a regression. This is the variable that we would like to predict. In this case, we want to predict effective tax rates or capped effective tax rates. Using the drop-down menu, I scrolled through all of my data options to find the effective tax rate, and I clicked once to make that my target variable. After we have our target variable, we then need to select our predictor variables. You should not have your target variable be a predictor variable. So you will be picking your independent variables or your right-hand side variables that you think may influence or have an association with your target variable. For this case, we'll go ahead and just select a couple at random. And I know the case asks you to have five. I only selected four because I'm demonstrating this. Now that I have my tool figure, configured, I can go ahead and run my regression. This step may take a little bit of time since it requires a good processing power on the back side to run the regression. And when we see the output, it looks a little less than thrilling. We really don't see, unlike all of our other steps, any changes to the data other than what happened with this last step. Even if we click through, we can see our data, but we still don't see our regression results. To see our regression results, we're going to go back to the In Out menu, and here we are going to select the Browse button. 
This browse tool looks like a pair of binoculars and we're going to drag it onto our canvas making sure that it makes a connection with the R side of the linear regression. Once we do so, there is no configuration required for the browse tool. So we have nothing to do in our configuration menu and we will just go ahead and select run. And what we see as a result is that now that we have our browse tool in place, we can see the results of the linear regression in our configuration panel. If we just click on that until and drag it over, we will get to see the entire output for the linear regression model. This will show us our coefficients, each of the independent variables that we selected. The coefficient estimate, their standard error, the T value, associated with the regression result, and then also our significance codes. The significance codes automatically pre-programmed into Alteryx are listed below so that you can identify what three stars, two stars, one star, or a period means. We also get our residual standard errors, our multiple R squared, and our adjusted R squared. There is also an ANOVA analysis available to you.